Hi everybody, welcome to our prediction video for Game of Thrones Season 8 Episode 5. The penultimate episode, the second to last of the entire show, the entire story. Oof, it's gonna be a wild, wild episode. I wanna read out and react to predictions from our patrons on patreon.com slash Academy. So far, most of our core predictions look very, very, very well. Oof, 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 oof. Okay, so before I read out and react to the predictions here, what I think basically is going to happen in episode five, Daenerys is going to come in with her dragon. She's going to Dracarys the city. This has been in the works for three seasons, but there's wildfire underneath the city. And then everything will burn. And I think she might also burn, or at least her dragon will burn, Drogon. Sansa will continue to consolidate her power. And I think that she will get a few letters from Tyrion and Varys telling her, nyum, nyum, nyum. you wanna think about maybe, maybe you should be queen? Yeah, I think Tyrion will send the letter. That's gonna be like the major event of episode five, I think. I have some more predictions, but first let's react to some patient predictions. David Bloom, he says he's a fan of the Sansa as queen theory. I think that it's less a theory now and more a truth and fact. But he's not sure that D&D can put it off in an interesting way. And maybe they'll have Jon as a reluctant king and Sansa as queen, is, as queen of the north, he says. He can live with that. Let me tell you why it cannot happen. This is an epic story. This is a story, as we've seen, it's not a fantasy, regular fantasy story about magic. No, no, no. This is a political historical story. This is why the last three episodes are about politics. A story like that cannot start with a realm made up of seven kingdoms and then end with a realm made up of two kingdoms. Okay, a bad king to begin with, a reluctant king to, begin to end with. What was uh, all the fuss about? It just doesn't make story sense. That would be just like, okay, so why did we watch this for eight seasons? No. Sansa's queen means everything changes in the realm. We start with seven separate kingdoms. We end with one kingdom. We start, we start with seven separate armies. We end with one army. We have an alliance between the crown and the faith and the and the maesters, and we end up with, with everything underneath the queen. And this queen will build, will build maybe some sort of a house of lords. I think she will also be kind of elected in some way by the lords. This is a solution to the problem we saw since the first episode. The kingdom is divided. No one can agree on who should rule. People are still bitter over what happened 15 years ago. The old system basically incentivizes ambitious people, say someone like Tywin, to try and push themselves ahead and get themselves ahead and use the fact when there is a king who is not a, a good king. Will John be a good king? That a future Tywin will not be able to, mani to manipulate? I don't think so. I think when, when the power balance changes when there's a different capital, maybe in Heron Hall, when all the lords come in there, they leave all their bases of powers behind, they come into the capital where the monarch, Queen Sansa, is the strongest, and there they try to rule in some way together. In that way, what happened at the beginning of the story Will not, be, will not be able to happen again. No, if you have an absolute monarch that is ruling the entire, with one army, that is ruling the entire realm, not seven kingdoms, one kingdom, united kingdom of Westeros. This also obviously makes history sense. This story is based on English history. Hmm? There will be some kind of uh, maybe Magna Carta to 
assuage the fears of the lords. Okay, I'm going to take all your weapons. We're going to have one, uh, one army under me. But first of all, you know me. I'm not a horrible person. I'm not scary. I'm just Sansa. Hmm? So you give me this, but I'll give you safety. Other lords won't be able to attack you. Okay, I have all the guns. So now we can all, we can all get along. We can all get along. I wasn't a huge fan of the Sansa theory. It wasn't my theory to begin with, right? It was Itamar's theory. But the more I thought about it, I was like, this, I became more of a believer in it than he was even, because it just can't end in a different way, because it just, this, the whole story would just collapse and we just wouldn't make any sense. It's not that I'm enjoying setting myself up for a fall if she doesn't end up as a queen. It's just like I can't, literally can't see any other conclusion that makes sense. She's just queen in the north, so why did we follow her entire story and arc uh, since the beginning? I mean, just so she could be queen in the north. Okay, David Kroik. He thinks Cersei dies by Arya's or Jaime's hand. Murder-suicide. Tyrion inherits the throne after his sister marries Sansa. Tyrion inherits the throne? Oh, marries Sansa in the Lannister Stark alliance. John and Danny die in battle or are murdered by their own people. Now, I don't think John will die. I don't think John will die. I think Daenerys will, will probably die next episode. I heard one, I read one prediction that Jaime will be taken hostage by Daenerys to threaten uh, Cersei, which is actually nothing like anything I ever predicted, but I like it. This uh, could be possible, he's making his way south. My initial prediction wasn't that groundbreaking about him, it was that he will try to negotiate with Cersei, kill her, and I think Tyrion, I thought initially that Tyrion will maybe sack the city some way, maybe Cersei still believes he's with her in some way, we saw their interaction seemed kind of weird, right? And David also thinks that Bronn gets Highgarden. No, he gets nothing. He gets nothing. Actually, so I was thinking that Jaime will end up as a hand of the queen, but I'm starting to think that maybe the Lannister house needs to be destroyed, root and stem, like they did to, to the Castamere, to the reigns of Castamere. Cersei dying, that would mean Jaime dying, which I did not uh, predict, and I think Tyrion would be sent over to Westeros without his tongue. That would be more for the predictions for episode 6. Shay de War. The comet from the end of season 1, <laughs> I think it's from the beginning of season 2, will return, strike the planet, and most of the key characters will survive. It's funny. Uh, Bronn will turn out to be the Lord of Light and become king somehow. Dana S. Jamie, forever the Kingslayer, will once again save King's Landing from a mad Targaryen monarch. He might even stab her in the back. That was my prediction as well. I'm not so sure anymore. I think both are great actors. I think it could be an epic epic scene if it is done well just like all the baggage from eight and a half seasons just now out in the open it could be epic dindy i know you already wrote it it was already <laughs> directed and edited but bridget hall she thinks john will kill daenerys because her sanity has gone past the point of no return so that's like classic Azura High thing. I could have seen it coming before the episodes one through four this season. I can't see it happening anymore. He's so reluctant. What would she have to do for him to go to such lengths as to kill her? I think her burning makes more sense. All the predictions about her dying at childbirth. She's not that pregnant. Ooh, and then take her body to the lands of always winter, put her on this ice table where uh, the baby white walkers are born, and then her eyes will open blue. That's actually kind of cool. It has nothing to do with the story. Sorry, Bridget. <laughs> there, I'm, I will literally put all my money against this happening. It's kind of cool. It's kind of creative, but this is for another story, maybe. Alec. Ooh, hello, Alec. Long time, no prediction. He thinks Danny dying in childbirth is so cliche and cruel. I think maybe the Golden Company will flip because of the Iron Bank. 
I think that might be true for the for this for the books. I think the Iron Back is no longer relevant in the show, and I don't think that they will flip for Daenerys. They will flip for Sansa. This is was Ned Scott uh, mentioned it in our Q and A. John will end up as the Lord Commander of the Night's Watch. No, there won't be any Night's Watch. There will be one standing army for everybody. Princes. Arya Buttercup. Everybody dies and Sansa is the last noble standing. The capital moves to Winterfell. Uh, almost true. I think Sansa will be one of the last uh, people left standing. I don't know if Arya... What? I don't, I don't know about Arya. They just f f fucked everything up with uh, episode 3. But the capital will not move to Winterfell. No. Philip. Hello, Philip. Boom. He anticipates serious carnage. Probably the fall of Daenerys. Cersei will win the war, but the cost will be tremendous. Ah, uh, and then Jaime will go in episode 7. Okay. Okay. Alright, so this actually goes well with another prediction from us. He was a guest uh, on the show. That King's Landing will be turned irrelevant. Maybe Cersei will survive, but... She will be left with nothing. And then if it's between Cersei and Sansa, all the power will just flock out of King's Landing into the new capital. Okay, maybe it won't burn entirely. Also, I think that Daenerys burning herself, the unburnt burning herself through the wildfire, I think that makes sense. Florian Brusius thinks Arya will kill Daenerys. Ooh, that was my uh, prediction starting at the season. I don't think so anymore. I don't know. I hope so. I hope so. I thought that she would be manipulated by Sansa, but now that she already left Sansa and the betraying of Jon, anticipated Sansa betraying Jon, but I thought that it would happen at the end of the season. They have been building it up right since season five. They've been arguing, whatever, season five, season six. But now that this betrayal already happened, okay, but he has to find out and be angry also. Hmm. <laughs> Okay, Casey has a lot of compliments to the two idiots D&D. &D. Agreed. Let's assume we all agree, don't have to read it out loud. Okay, he thinks Arya attempts to kill Cersei, but doesn't make it, and then Jamie does it. Jon stabs Daenerys, then leaves. I had this image of uh, Daenerys dying in Jon's arm arms and telling him, you know nothing. Maybe she will find out about him uh, spilling the beans to his sisters. Some more compliments to the idiot's D&D. And he thinks that having Sansa, not as queen, but as Lady of Winterfell, this is to subvert uh, expectations. This is what D&D uh, &D, uh, are doing. I think we're living in a bubble because in this channel we have been uh, talking about Sansa being queen for four years. I guess, outside this bubble, no one has ever heard of this theory. <laughs> Everybody that I talk to over here, like, Sansa? Nah, come on. Come on, you tripping. Even other YouTube channels, they were like, no, Daenerys, Jon, some combination, Tyrion. So I don't, I don't think that, uh, I think Sansa is subverting uh, expectations. And I think this is maybe, makes it for sure that she will be queen. And last, but certainly not least, Anke, whom, uh, who's both, both of our teams lost in a very depressing way in the Champions League uh, semi-final. Don't want to talk about it. Feel your pain, Anke. She thinks that since the mountain is kind of undead, he will have to be killed by fire. And the hound will have to overcome his biggest fear in order to kill him. Boom. I like it. I like it. Okay. What do you think of these predictions? Be sure to mention in the comments next week we have loads of cool videos we have we are launching our psychology in movies series we're starting out with the father archetype in movies it's a very very cool and thoughtful video stay tuned also i'm hoping that next week we're going to launch our philosophy in movies videos. The first two are going to be about the Truman Show and then it's going to be then it's going to be general philosophical themes throughout several movies. So check that out. And of course, check out our podcast, the God Academy podcast. I love quality content over there with quality contributors. Check it out. You can also find it on Apple Podcasts, iTunes, 
Stitcher, Spotify. Boom. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Thank you, patrons, for supporting our work. And we'll see you all next time. Bye, everybody. Hey, so I hope you enjoyed this video. So click subscribe to never miss any God Academy video about any topic. We do movies, we do TV shows, we do books. And also you can click the bell to get a notification whenever we post a new video.